Welcome to Subclass School, the series where I break down everything you need to know about every subclass. In today's lesson, we'll be covering the solar subclass, specifically the aspects. Each class has three solar aspects, so we will start with the hunter and go from there. Bungie has teased at least one new solar aspect coming in the final shape, as it will give us a solar turret similar to an arc soul, and I think it will pair super well with Touch of Flame. Anyways, I will cover everything you need to know about that aspect in detail when it comes out, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that video in the future. But now, let's dive into the aspects we currently have in the game. First up for Hunter is Gunpowder Gamble. The in-game description says defeat targets with abilities, solar debuffs, or solar weapons to charge up an improvised solar explosive. Throw a solar explosive that can be shot in mid-air to cause an ignition. So this takes 6 charges to build up and then we get the explosive. And we can build the charges in a few ways. So first, you can shoot the explosive in mid-air or just throw it on a target or the ground and it will ignite after 3 seconds. Then if we look to the destiny data compendium, it gives us some helpful info. The weapon kills have to be with a solar weapon, and each one will give you one stack of gunpowder gamble. But what they don't mention here is that the higher the tier of the target, the more stacks you get. So champion or yellow bar will actually give you 3 stacks of gunpowder gamble, and super kills will automatically give you 6, and your ability kills will give you 4, so a powered melee or grenade kills. After you throw the gunpowder gamble explosive, there's a 6 second cooldown and during that time you cannot build any more stacks towards another gunpowder gamble. Because the explosive causes an ignition, we can also use this to stun unstoppable champions. And Bungie recently changed the amount of self damage that you take from the explosive, which is actually really nice because it was a big reason I didn't like running this in higher end content. And that is pretty much all you need to know about gunpowder gamble and how it works. Next we have knock em down. The in-game description reads your solar supers are enhanced. Deadshot Golden Gun has damage resistance, Marksman Golden Gun has increased duration, and Blade Barrage launches more projectiles. While Radiant, final blows with your equipped throwing knife will refund your melee energy. So once again, the Destiny Data Compendium has some extra info on this. Our Marksman Goldie lasts 4 seconds longer, we get 15% damage resist in our Deadshot Golden Gun, and this resist stacks with other resists, and our blade barrage fires an additional 3-5 to five knives per fan, which basically means more damage. The knife refund is super strong with things like Assassin's Cowl or Aphidious Spathe. And now we have the final hunter aspect, which is on your mark. Precision final blows grant you and nearby allies increased weapon handling and reload speed for a short duration. Stacks 3 times. Activating your class ability immediately grants increased stacks of on your mark. So as we get precision kills, we get a stack of on your mark and the timer lasts for 12 seconds. And it gets fully reset if we get another precision kill in that 12 seconds. So you can keep three stacks of it up for a very long time if you are slaying out with precision hits. And this also applies to teammates within 15 meters of us. This aspect makes our weapons feel incredibly snappy. It gives us great bonuses to handling and ready speed. Basically 15 stat points to each for each stack but it also gives a reload animation multiplier, so this allows you to exceed 100 reload speed. Needless to say, this is very nice, and if you're a fan of my content, you know I hate reloading, so I absolutely love this aspect. And the handling speed is extremely nice too. On top of all this, it is also one of the rare aspects that gets 3 fragment slots. So that is it for the hunter aspects, let's take a look at the titan aspects. Once again, there are 3. We'll start with consecration. This one is probably the least used, but Bungie just recently gave it a buff, and with the release of Pyrogel Gauntlets, I think you should definitely consider this aspect in some of your builds. This aspect states while sliding, activate your charged melee ability to launch a wave of solar energy forward, damaging and scorching targets in front of you as you leap in the air. While airborne, activate your charged melee again to slam to the ground and create a second larger wave of damaging solar energy. If the wave hits a scorched target, they ignite. So this aspect is great at dispatching groups of adds in a hurry. I've seriously been addicted to running it with Pyrogales this season. This aspect is a ton of fun to use, and if you know how to get up close to enemies in high-end content, it can be really powerful. Bungie also buffed it with the update on March 5th, and it's now easier to use and better than ever. Next up we have Roaring Flames. Final blows with solar abilities or ignitions increase the damage of your solar abilities. Stacks 3 times. 
So you can see in the background gameplay, my throwing hammer damage is increasing. The damage increases are 20% more at one stack, 44% more at two stacks, and 73% more at three stacks. And in PvP, those increases are 13%, 28%, and 44%. To combat excessive buff stacking, Bungie has nerfed how much this stacks with Syntheseps and Worm God's Caress, so Roaring Flames with those buffs active give 10%, 21%, and 33%. But trust me, they still pair very nicely with this build. Another cool interaction that you may not know about is that when you have Roaring Flames active, your regular melee applies Scorch. It is 30 Scorch at base and 40 with Ember of Ashes, meaning you can trigger an ignition in just 3 punches with Ember of Ashes equipped, and 4 without it. I really like this synergy and it comes in really handy sometimes, especially for extending Roaring Flames or proccing Soul Invictus Sunspots. And Roaring Flames buffs all your abilities. So it will not just buff your throwing hammer, but also your grenades, a consecration melee, or even your super. So it is often worth it to get 3 stacks of roaring flames before popping your super. The final titan aspect is Soul Invictus. It reads your solar ability final blows, hammer of soul impacts, and defeating scorched targets creates sunspots. Your abilities regenerate faster and your super drains more slowly while standing in a sunspot. Sunspots apply scorch and deal damage to targets inside. Entering a sunspot applies restoration. So the super extension is actually really good. The compendium says we get about a 40% decrease to our super drain, which matches up with my testing, as a base hammer of soul lasts about 15 seconds, but it lasts about 25 seconds when we stand in our sunspot. Passing through a sunspot gives us 5 seconds of restoration. If we have Ember of Empyrean on, so say we had 12 seconds of resto, this used to reset the restoration timer back down to 5. But with the patch fix on March 5th, this has been corrected. This is actually huge for general gameplay as it makes the gameplay experience much more user friendly and you don't have to worry about resetting your timer. Sunspots at base last for 5 seconds, but you can extend them by passing in and out of them. I was able to get them to last about 8 seconds while doing this, but the compendium says they can last up to 12 seconds. Also, the exotic boots Phoenix Cradle will double the lifespan of a sunspot. Sunspots also reduce our grenade and melee cooldown by half of our base regenerate. Or in other words, it regens 100% faster. This is awesome for ability spam builds and stacks with other ability cooldown buffs like Heart of Inmost Light. Lastly, Sunspots also apply Scorch which applies 5 Scorch at base and 8 Scorch with Ember of Ashes every 0.16 seconds. So as we can see, all of these titan aspects are pretty damn strong and Solar Titan is one of my all time favorite subclasses to play in Destiny. And that takes us to the Warlock. First up we have Heat Rises. You can fire weapons, melee and throw grenades while gliding. Hold grenade to activate Heat Rises. Final blows while airborne increase the duration of Heat Rises and grant melee energy. So if we consume a regular grenade, we get cure times 2 to ourself and allies within 9 meters of us. If we consume a healing grenade, however, we get cure times 3. And if we have touch of flame as our other aspect which enhances our healing grenades, we'll actually get restoration for 4 seconds on top of cure times 3. It also modifies the Icarus dash aspect as it will allow us to get 2 dodges when we have heat rises active. It also changes our glide function. Normally Burst Glide gives us a bit of a boost at the cost of directional control, but when Heat Rises is active, it does the opposite, essentially making it act like Strafe Glide, and Strafe Glide acts like Burst Glide. Just something to be aware of. It grants us plus 50 to our airborne effectiveness stat, and as mentioned earlier, lets us hang in the air and ADS without falling out of the air. Last season I made a really strong Wings of Sacred Dawn build with this that you should check out. It may not be the best in GMs, but it freaking slaps in pretty much any other content. It's a really fun and effective build. As you get kills while airborne, it will extend your heat rises timer based on the tier of enemy defeated, getting 5 seconds for red bars and going up from there. A cool thing to know with heat rises is you don't even need to have it active to get the melee energy return. In the background gameplay, you can see me getting kills while airborne and I am still getting melee energy back even though Heat Rises is not currently active, I just have the aspect equipped. This is extremely powerful, it means if you are running Heat Rises, you basically never need to spec into strength. The amount of melee energy you get back is based on the tier the combatant defeated. The compendium says you get 20% for tier 1 combatants, but my testing showed it was more like 15%. 
because I got 5 kills while airborne and still didn't get my charge fully back. Regardless, 15% from simple red bars is still extremely powerful. And for the final thing that it modifies is Phoenix Dive normally only gives cure times 2, but with Heat Rises active, or Phoenix Dive applies Scorch to enemies and gives Resto times 2 for 3 seconds. So this is a very versatile aspect with a lot of unique ways to modify other pieces of our Dawnblade kit. Next we have Icarus Dash. Basically just a movement aspect, but it comes in very handy for avoiding enemy attacks or ducking behind cover quickly. As I mentioned earlier, you get an additional charge while Heat Rises is active, and then there's a 5 second cooldown. And while you are airborne, rapidly killing targets with your super or weapons gives you cure. Without Heat Rises active, you get 1 dash and the cooldown is 4 seconds. The compendium shows the requirements for proc and cure while airborne, and essentially it is just 3 red bar kills, and it has to be in quick succession. As you are probably aware, you can pair Icarus Dash with Burst Glide to maintain momentum and do some pretty cool movement tech, especially with an Eager Edge Sword. And finally, that brings us to Touch of Flame, an extremely powerful aspect for the Warlock, especially in the right build. It states your healing, solar, firebolt, and fusion grenades have enhanced functionality. So for healing grenades, you get cure times 2 and resto times 2 instead of just times 1. Firebolt grenades seek more enemies and have 50% larger seek radius. Solar grenades linger for 2 seconds longer and release magma orbs that deal damage. This also stacks with Sunbracer's benefits to solar grenades. And fusion grenades get an additional explosion which deals 11.5% more damage than the initial explosion. So overall, it makes them deal more than double the damage of a regular fusion grenade which is obviously very strong. And that is going to do it for all of the solar aspects in Destiny. In my opinion, solar is the strongest subclass in the game and I hope this video series helped to showcase why that is. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next subclass school which will break down all of the abilities that solar has to offer. And if you are still watching, then thanks for watching to the end. I hope you learned something. Take care.